This is the eighth lecture for MA 1012. In this lecture, we'll think about vectors. The vectors we'll think about will be in three-dimensional Euclidean space, so looking something like this three-coordinate axis, um, which we'll, uh, we'll label as x, y, and z axes. And um, we'll distinguish two different kinds of vectors. Um, there'll be uh, little dots which indicate where something is, which are either called points or um, also called position vectors, um, and usually drawn just as a dot. And um, so we'll uh, indicate then using uh, this kind of this kind of picture where this thing is. We can imagine its shadow down on the xy plane. And we can figure out how much y then, how much x, how much x that has, and how much y that has, projecting it onto the x and y axes. And so it's going to have some amount of of x, and then some amount of y, and then some amount of z. And its location will be x, y, z. Um, so that's a, a, a point or or a displacement, or sorry, position vector, um, and. Um, we'll also have what are called displacement vectors, which we'll think of as some, such as the same sort of idea, but um, a displacement vector can be thought of as the, the difference between two position vectors. So if we have a position here and a position here, then we'll draw a vector that goes from one to the other, and we'll call it a displacement vector because it indicates how one point is displaced with respect to another. Um, so that's the idea of a, of a displacement vector. And um, if you wanted to write out some sort of formulas, we could say that if we had, um, if we had points, uh, so or posi uh, position vectors, p1 is x1, y1, z1, and some uh, p2 is x2, y2, z2, uh, locations of two points, then the uh, the displacement but from going from one to the other from p1 to p2 is given by the vector um, p1 p2 with maybe something like an arrow right on top of it to indicate we're going from p1 to p2 which is x2 minus x1 starting at x1 and adding what you need to get to x2 how much you need to get from x1 to x2 for how much you need to get from uh, y1 to y2 and from uh, Z1 to Z2. But typically we'll think of displacement vectors just as vectors, and our vectors are usually uh, that better thought of as displacement vectors. So that, um, while we often call uh, position vectors just points, we'll also call displacement vectors just vectors, which is a, perhaps a more convenient notation for our terminology for them. There's one uh, special vector in the picture, which is the zero vector, which is right here. That's the vector whose coordinates are 0, 0, 0. And it's often just called O or 0. And it's referred to as the origin. So 0, 0, 0, often called either O or also sometimes just called 0, is uh, referred to as the origin. So when we work with vectors, uh, we need to have uh, some kind of algebraic laws for how we handle them. We add them by adding their entries. 1, uh, 0, minus 3 is added to 2, 1, 5. The vector added to a vector by uh, for adding the components, 1 and 2, adding the middle components, 0 plus 1, and adding the last components, minus 3 and 5, and so on. Algebraically, this means that if we have vector A and a vector B, then um, we're simply adding the entries. And so if you add them in the opposite order, you get the same answer. And if you have a vectors A and B, and then you add a vector C to them, you get the same thing as if you did A plus B plus C, because that works for numbers. And the, uh, the entries of the, of the sum are just the sum of the entries. We can also scale a vector by saying that if we multiply a vector 1, 0, minus 3 by 2, we do it by multiplying each entry by 2. 
in the obvious way. So we get 2, 0, minus 6. Just doubling the entries of the vector, and so on. So if we have to scale vector by any scalar m number, a scalar it just means a number, and we scale a vector by a number by, by scaling every one of its entries by that number. We can draw that in a picture. Um, if we have a, a, a vector um, in three dimensions, and we so we draw a vector, uh, some vector a, and we were to double it, that would be the same as just grab the vector and slide it along itself, and then we get two copies of it and add them together, and that gives us 2a. Um, of course, 0 times a is just 0, the 0 vector, just the origin. And then if I, I didn't draw that very straight, but um, if I were to, to reverse the direction exactly and make exactly the same length, that would be minus a. And uh, minus 2a, similarly, would be generated by, would be drawn by drawing the same vector again uh, twice but backwards. So here's a, draw it backwards, you get minus a, draw it twice backwards, you get minus 2a, and so on. We can draw pictures like that to indicate what vector addition looks like as well. If we have um, some vectors, again, which would be in three-dimensional space, and if we were to draw um, uh, one vector and then another one, we could ask what does it mean to add them in a picture it means you grab this green vector and you slide it up so that its end, its foot sits, its foot here, slide it up so its foot sits at the end of this red one, and then you produce a parallelogram. So this is a vector A, and this guy here is some vector B, and if you draw a parallelogram with those vectors as the four sides, then the resulting uh, vector that you get, if you go across the diagonal here of the parallelogram is the vector a plus b. That vector there is the sum of this vector and this vector in a picture. And that should be familiar when you think about resolving uh, force vectors, how, you, uh, how you, you physically figure out how two forces combine to produce a resulting force. There are a lot of different notations that are unfortunately that are used in the world of vectors. Um, We'll uh, stick with uh, always with the one from the notes. Um, so um, we've already written our vectors as um, some vector is somehow having an x, a y, and a z component. Um, for example, we could write down a vector 1, minus 2, 3. Um, that's a vector with, this is its x component, this is y component, this is its z component. So if we tried to draw what it looks like, we'd go out one unit in the, where are our x? Um, one unit in x, and then we'd go, have to go back two units in the y's, um, and then we'd have to go up one, two, three units in the z's. So we've gone one unit this way, one, two units that way, and then one, two, three units this way, and that should hopefully be something like that, should be this vector, uh, one minus two, three. Um, it's not very easy to see the three-dimensional pictures. They're hard to draw, but they're also, they're also hard to make use of because you can't really get a clear picture from this little red arrow of exactly where it sits in space. Um, so the pictures are, are unfortunately not very helpful in three dimensions. They're somewhat helpful, but not very helpful, much more helpful in two dimensions. Anyway, for our notation, we're going to um, take uh, the notation as is given in the book that uh, in the notes that uh, we take a vector going one unit along the x-axis and we call it i, a vector going one unit in the along the y-axis we call it j, and a vector going one unit in the z direction and call it k. Sorry, I've messed it up. I've got them the wrong way. This is supposed to be my y-axis. I'll try and follow the notes more carefully. Okay, this is the x-axis. All right, so there are actually differences in uh, which who people <laughs> people do put the axes in different places, um, but we'll make sure we stick with our book and uh, put our, that'll be our y-axis. So I've messed that one up as well. Um, I reflected it, uh, put the, should have been the x-axis here. So, okay, so I'll try and make sure I get that right from now on. Anyway, here's our picture. Uh, I goes one unit in the x-axis, J one unit in the 
in the y-axis and k1 unit in the in the z-axis, and in they really should be drawn with some kind of bold letters, uh, like in the in the notes i, j, and k. But uh, some people prefer it's fine, whatever way you want to do it, to put little vector symbols on. Usually you drop the dot on the i and the j, and you put little vector symbols on, and that's fine. Either notation is okay. Um, so we know what we mean by i, j, and k. The notation goes back to Hamilton, um, who developed this notation in when he was working at uh, Trinity College Dublin. We'll, we'll use the same notation when we work in the plane, um, which is unfortunate because it does actually clash with our complex notation. We had notation for complex numbers. If we think of them as complex numbers, that was 1 and this was i. And now if we think of them not as complex numbers but as vectors, we're going to go with again with what we have in our notes and our vector notes, which is this is i now and this is j. So these, those notations don't agree. The letter i is used for different numbers, for different things. Um, so that's dangerous, um, possible source of confusion there. But if we, again, if we want to spe specify what are these things, one unit in each direction, so in three dimensions, the um, the notation was to put a a guy, one unit here, one unit here, one unit here, and so the vector i, which again should be somehow bold, is one unit in the x, no units in the y, no units in the z, and this j is 0, 1, 0, and the k is 0, 0, 1. Uh, in the plane, we have uh, this i is 1, 0, and this j is 0, 1. But if we think of them as complex numbers, then the complex number 1 is as a vector 1, 0, and the complex number i is 0, 1, which again doesn't agree with this. So there are two different conventions, one when we think of vectors in the plane, and the other when we think of complex numbers, and there's a danger of confusion. One of the classic problems that people thought about in the early 19th century, particularly Hamilton, was the problem of how to multiply uh, vectors. What's the reasonable notion for multiplying vectors that would hopefully extend multiplying of complex numbers? There seem to be two reasonable standard conventions um, for doing this. Uh, one is the dot product and the other is the cost product. The dot product uh, is very simple and it arises much more often than the cross product. Um, the dot product of vectors, if we write a vector a as having components a1, a2, a3, which again we can write in our other notation as a1i plus a2j plus a3k. Okay, and split into um, components in the i direction, j direction, k direction, or along the x, y, and z axes. Um, uh, and then if we have a vector b, b1, b2, b3, so it's x, y, and z components written in the in this notation of triples, or we can write it in this more vectory notation as uh, this amount of i plus this amount of j plus this amount of k. Uh, so those are our vectors written in those two different notations. Then we, the, I haven't started writing what the dot product is. a dot b is simply defined to be, you t multiply the corresponding components, a1, b1 plus a2, b2 plus a3, b3. Um, so the result is a number, a scalar. Scalar, I remember, is another word for number. Um, and this is a scalar, it's a number, because we plug in a, a vector A and a vector B, but those are all numbers. All these expressions in here are numbers, and you multiply together numbers, and you add numbers, and you get numbers. So that's a number, that's a scalar. It's not a, not a vector. So we take two vectors as inputs, and the output of the dot product is a number. Um, so let's see if we can do it in a simple example. If we did three, so as an example, do three, uh, four, zero, dot product with minus two, two, five as a vector. So these are two vectors that are inputs. Uh, that each is just a list of three numbers. And uh, the resulting output is you multiply the first entry by the first entry, second by second, third by third. So the first entry times the first entry is three times minus two plus Second times second is four times two plus last times last is zero times five. So that's our dot product. Uh, we've written out, expanded what it is. Let's calculate that. So three times two is six, with a minus is minus six. Four times two is eight, and zero times five is zero. 
minus 6 plus 8 is 2. So that gives us the um, calculation of a dot product of some vectors. Um, and, and a particularly important example is if we take a dot product of a vector with itself, we get a1, a1 plus a2, a2 plus a3, a3 is, um, of course, a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared, which is the sum of squares of the, of the entries, and that we know is the length squared by Pythagorean theorem. Um, so we'll let this sign be the symbol for the length, the length of the vector, which is by definition the square root of the uh, sum squares entries. Okay, so that's the length of a vector. It's how long it is geometrically by Pythagorean theorem, and it's just given by summing the squares of the entries and then taking the square root of the whole thing. Following the notes, I'm, I'm not writing any vector symbol over A. I'm just taking it as understood that in this case A must be a vector. A is some A1, A2, A3. I'm just assuming that without giving any notation for it because, after all, um, what else could it be if we take a dot product? It has to be a vector. Um, but uh, it may be confusing at po some points whether something's a vector or not. I'm, not, I'm going to follow the, the notes and not give you any special symbol for vector. If I were really good at writing carefully, I might make it a bold symbol for the letter A for the vector. Um, but if you prefer, again, you could write a little vector symbol on top to convince yourself that something is a vector, to, to remember that something's a vector, that's fine too. The, the dot product satisfies numerous identities. I want to um, uh, think about what does it mean intuitively? What is the dot product? Um, I want to say that A dot B is something like uh, how much uh, A and B are in agreement. Um, it's something like a measure of their of their correspondence with one another or their correlation with one another. It is often called cor a correlation. So, for example, if you have very, very large vectors and they point nearly in the same direction, then they're going to have, so that's A and that's B, then A dot B is going to be a large positive, large positive number. Um, and if, uh, on the other hand, they are very large but point in almost opposite directions, maybe maybe opposite, maybe nearly opposite directions, then in fact, because they disagree strongly, A dot B is going to be a large negative number. So let's say this is A and this is B. Um, and then, uh, of course, then what happens in the middle? In between, if you have them nearly perpendicular, or in fact, maybe being perpendicular, it may be quite large or it might be quite small, it doesn't matter. If they're nearly perpendicular, a dot b is going to be small. Even if they're fairly large vectors, if they're very close to being perpendicular, let's say close to a 90 degree angle there, then uh, this should be small. Well, this is approximately 90 degrees. I don't have to have it exactly 90 degrees. If it's exactly 90 degrees, it's zero. Um, so exactly 90 degrees, perfect 90 degree angle, then you get a dot b is zero because they, they, they don't agree at all. They completely disagree about which way they go. These ones disagree uh, in the sense that they this is negative because this one wants to go the opposite way to that one. They're, they're sort of pulling pushing in opposite directions. These ones uh, give you zero because they uh, are actually perpendicular to one another. This one wants to go along this line and this one's going on a perpendicular line. So you get a zero dot product. So again, positive, they really like the same, pretty much to go in the same direction. Uh, negative, they want to go in opposite directions, and zero in between when they want to go perpendicularly. Um, also, of course, I should point out that even if they agree in direction, if they're very, very small, uh, then if this is A and this is B, then A dot B is small. Uh, it's small positive because they are going the same direction more or less, or pretty close to the same direction, but they're tiny. Um, so if you make small vectors, or even if you just make one very, very small and the other, say, medium size, then you should expect that a dot b will be small. In this case, it'd be very small because they're both small. But here you'd expect it to be small positive because they're going in pretty much the same sort of direction. So you get some sense intuitively for what they mean, what dot products represent about vectors. We can make that more precise with a formula, um, which is that the dot product 
actually is the product of the lengths times the cosine of the angle between them. Angle between uh, between A and and B. Now it doesn't matter whether you measure the angle going from A to B or from B to A because it's a cosine. So if you change the sign, it doesn't notice. Cosine is sine insensitive. It doesn't notice whether it's a plus a theta or a minus theta. So cosine doesn't care whether you just go from A to B or B to A when you measure this angle. So that's a good thing. We don't have to worry about it. And, and that's not surprising because the A B should have that property. So so you can see how it works. It, if they're very very big vectors, you get very very big multiples of this cosine. The cosine vanishes if they're perpendicular because that's one of the properties of cosine that uh, that it, it when you hit it with a right angle it gives you zero. Uh, when you make a small angle, cosine's close to one, so you get nearly the product. When you make an angle that's close to um, 180 degrees, uh, high pi radians, then you get a near minus one here, and so you get almost the you get a, a, a large negative coming out. Okay, so you can see why all of those results are just contained in this simple formula. We have some other algebraic facts, which are very elementary facts about dot products, very easy to derive um, and easy to see. A dot B surely has to be B dot A. That follows from the previous formula um, because it had the product of the lengths and the cosine of the angle between them. But it also follows from just looking at the, at the expanding out the dot product in its original definition. Um, also, of course, uh, A dot some linear combination of B's, uh, two vectors B and C is just going to expand out as the ob in the obvious way. Um, and that's just because this expression, when you write out all the dot products, you've got the products of the components of this and the components of that. But the components of this guy are just the sums of component of this plus t times component that. And this is for t, a scalar, a number, um, and for a, b, and c vectors. So these identities are useful for computing out lots of uh, lots of quantities. So we'll we'll need to be familiar with them. Um, and uh, another uh, elementary fact here is that, um, which follows from our description in terms of cosines, is that if you measure the dot product, then um, you certainly don't get anything bigger than the product of the lengths because it was product of lengths times a cosine. And cosines between minus one and one, so you can go the other way as well. That you never get anything smaller than the product of the lengths with a minus sign, and larger or larger than the product of the lengths with a plus sign. And that just follows again from our cosine law for uh, for dot products. So it's a convenient law to remember. Um, and so uh, we also said that we got a zero dot product when they're perpendicular. So that enables us to actually use that as a as a way to test for perpendicularity, which isn't completely obvious. Again, the pictures are pretty confusing when you try and draw the pictures of this vector in terms of the axes. You actually draw it out on, on your graph. It doesn't, it isn't completely obvious exactly where it sits. Um, so visually, it's a bit confusing. So if I take these two vectors, this is A, say, and this is B, then we can compute out their dot product, A dot B, so that's 1, 2, minus 1, dot product with 3, minus 1, 1. And again, the way you do a dot product is you multiply the quarter of the x entries, the y entries, the z entries, and you add them all up. So 1 times 3 plus 2 times minus 1 plus minus 1 times 1. So 1 times 3, 2 times minus 1, minus 1 times 1. So that's our entries. We multiply them together. We add it all up. And we get three, uh, sorry, minus three minus two minus one, and that's zero. Three minus two minus one is zero. So therefore, A and B are perpendicular, or we could write it as A is perpendicular to B, or we could just say A is perpendicular, uh, perpendicular to B, or we could also say A is orthogonal to be whichever you like. Um, so two different terminologies for the same thing. And again, what that means is that these two vectors have a 90 degree angle between them. Okay, these are two non-zero vectors, but their product is zero, their dot product is zero, so that means they have a right angle between them. They go in, in so to speak, uh, or in perpendicular directions. There's still another kind of product, though the dot product is only one of the two kinds of products that we have for vectors in three-dimensional space. And um, the other kind is called the cross product. We'll talk about that next time.